This is my theory on Five Nights at Freddy's, so don't take it as fact. It could easily be completely wrong after something new is uncovered. Alright, so let's start with the basics. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is a prequel to Five Nights at Freddy's 1. On night 5, we are told that the first restaurant was not actually Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, but actually Fred Bear's Family Diner, where Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy came from. At some point at the diner while Freddy was handing out cake, a kid was locked out of the party and a man, who we will call Purple, came up and killed said kid, all the while Freddy knew and something in him was saying, save him. Somehow, this dead kid becomes the marionette. At some point, we have Foxy running out to five kids to surprise them. But on the third run, Purple is seen in the corner and all five kids are dead. This is possibly the cause for the diner's closure. We then come to the marionette's minigame, where four of the dead kids are, and you put the heads of Freddy... Foxy, Bonnie, and Chica on them. But what about the fifth, you say? Golden Freddy. We then have the new place, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, known by the fact that it has the parts room with the old animatronics. The marionette shows up, maybe after hours, and Freddy follows him, while the same thing said, save them. Maybe more kids were in danger and the marionette was leading Freddy to it? Sometimes you will find Golden Freddy while following the marionette. Now this might not be that big of a deal if it weren't for the other ending for this. That being that Purple shows up and attacks Freddy, crashing the game. Maybe Purple used the Golden Freddy suit to get in after hours and to a greater extent used the suit to get in and kill the kids in Foxy's minigame? considering that the suit was said to be used for something bad previously. Now, all of this could explain why the animatronics are so hostile to adults after everything Purple did. Eventually, the marionette gives life to all of the animatronics. That's when things start going downhill as the previous night guard reported the animatronics trying to get into the office and was then moved to the day shift. Uh, we switched him over to the day shift. So, hey, look at you, right? Resulting in our good friend, Jeremy Fitzgerald, getting hired. Blah, 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 old animatronics turn on, blah, mangle this nightmare fuel, blah, blah, blah. Then we reach the fifth night, where we're told that the building is in lockdown concerning a previous employee, and that the day shift has become available. Uh, from what I understand, the building is on lockdown, as no one is allowed in or out, you know, especially concerning any previous employees. Um, when we get it all sorted out, we may move you to the day shift. A position just became available. Could this previous employee be purple? And that that was why the animatronics were trying to get into the office? Then there's the sixth night. The place is closing down, and... Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. Did someone use the suit? Or did it come alive because of the marionette? Either way, it's up and moving now during night six. And Jeremy is then told that... We have one more event scheduled for tomorrow, a birthday. You'll be on day shift. Wear your uniform. Stay close to the animatronics and make sure they don't hurt anyone, okay? Resulting in the most infamous of events. The Bite of 87. Now here we go with my personal favorite theory. We have Jeremy, working at the birthday party, watching toy Freddy, Chica, and Bonnie. The marionette is doing its thing, or whatever that is, since we never really hear anything about what it does during the day. But eventually Mangle gets up and leaves Kid Cove. Crawling around on the ceiling, 
it goes above Jeremy and, well, its kill screen says it all. That gives Mangle the perfect position to attack the frontal lobe, the point that the bite was inflicted to, as stated by the phone guy in the beginning of Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? After that event, the place is shut down, the new animatronics are disassembled, the old ones refurbished, and that takes us to Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Now there is other theories like Purple being Golden Freddy, and him being the one that's bit, or the significance of London bridges falling down being used in the trailer. But like I said, this is my theory for now, and I'm happy with it. The only question is, what happened to the marionette? Is it still around? Did it ever go do anything during the day? Could Purple be controlling it? We might never know. That is, until Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is announced and subsequently released in three months. <laughs>